and was now in charge. <clears throat> Gibbons declares this, as soon as their numbers were complete, Abu Bakr descended, ascended the hill, reviewed the men, the horses and the arms, and poured forth a fervent prayer for the success of the undertaking. And what does he say? Remember, said the successor of the Prophet, that ye are always in the presence of God. And that's something that we should always remember, isn't it? That we are in the presence of God. On the verge of death, in the assurance of judgment. Sounds like a servant of the Adventists, isn't it? and the hope of paradise avoid injustice and oppression consult with your brethren and study to preserve the love and confidence of your troops when you fight the battles of the Lord acquit yourselves like men without turning your backs but let not your victory be stained with the blood of women or children destroy no palm trees and what did the Bible say it says disturb not the grass not the trees or those that have the seal of God. Destroy no palm trees, nor burn any field of corn. <clears throat> Cut down no fruit trees, nor do any mischief to cattle, only such as you kill to eat. When you make a covenant, stand to it and be as good as your word. As you go on, you will find some religious persons who live retired in monasteries <clears throat> and propose themselves to serve God that way. Now these aren't the kind of monasteries that we find within the Catholic Church. But it says, let them alone, and neither kill them nor destroy their monasteries. But what did the Bible say? It says, leave those that have the seal of God. But you will find another sort of people that belong to the synagogue of Satan, who have shaven crowns. Where do we find shaven crowns? Amongst the monks of the Catholic Church. Be sure you cleave their skulls and give them no quarter till they either turn Mohammedans or pay tribute. In the footnote, Gibbon says this, Even in the 7th century, the monks were generally laymen. They wore their hair long and disheveled, and shaved their heads when they were ordained priests. The circular tonsure was sacred and mysterious. It was the crown of thorns, but it was likewise a royal diadem, and every priest was a king. So let's look at the prophecy again. It says, hurt not the grass nor the trees and leave those that have the seal of God in their heads. But we find that there were a class of Christians that were spared and there was a class of Christians that were killed. And these are the monks that were killed. In the book, Truth Triumphant by B.G. Wilkerson, he says, during this time, many of the Christians in the East kept the true Sabbath. That these were Sabbath keepers. And it was these people that had the seal of God. These are the Christians that were spared. In the early centuries of the Christian era, the Church of the East, not the Western or the Latin churches, sometimes called the Assyrian Church, sometimes the Nestorian Church, who were observers of the true Sabbath, very effectively spread throughout Asia and the East, but remained separate from the Church of the West, especially the apostasy. These true Christians became the teachers of the Saracens and were responsible for establishing an educational system in Syria, Mesopotamia, Turkestan, Tibet, China, India, Ceylon and other areas. These Christians kept the true Sabbath. When the Arabian Empire was fully established, it built up Baghdad, its magnificent new capital. The Church of the East removed its spiritual capital from Seleucia to Baghdad where it remained for approximately the next 500 years. To his Christian subjects, i.e. the true Christians, not the apostate ones whom the Arabs tormented, Muhammad readily granted the security of their persons, the freedom of their trade, the, the property of their goods, and the toleration of their worship. So even, in, even Gibbons recognized that there were a class of Christians that were protected by Muhammad. Chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. This power tormented the Eastern Roman Empire, but did not manage to destroy it completely. So the verse says that they would not kill them refers to a political kill. 
The tormenting power of these raiders made life a burden for the Eastern Empire, who were getting attacked by them. They would rather have been conquered by them and thus stop the torment. Whatever they tried, the Arabs were unable to conquer Eastern or Western Rome. They failed twice to take Constantinople. When the Arabs first issued from the desert, they must have been surprised at the ease and rapidity of their own success. But when they advanced in the career of victory to the banks of the Indus and the summit of the Pyrenees, they might be equally astonished that any nation could resist their invincible arms, that any boundary should confine the dominion of the successor of the Prophet. The calm historian of the present hour, who strives to follow the rapid course of the Saracens, must study to explain by what means the church and state were saved from this impending, and as it should seem, from this inevitable danger. And here we see the complete history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Every, every student of the word do well to have a copy of this set. Henry Hallam describes the turning back of the Arab hordes as one of the marvels of history. These conquests which astonish the careless and superficial are less perplexing to a calm inquirer than their cessation, the loss of half the Roman Empire than the preservation of the rest. What is the five months? We shall come to that. Revelation chapter 9 verses 7 to 9 And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Here we have a description of what these desert warriors were like. It talks about their battle horses. The Arabian desert horses were amazing animals. They were raised by their owners in the tents right along with the family and were treated with gentleness so that they were very highly trained. At a word or touch from their master they would run like the wind into battle or flee away across the sand. The crowns of gold were the yellow turbans these men wore and they had long hair either braided up or loose and the teeth of lions meant their fierceness in battle again it talks about many horses running to battle the Arab warrior on their swift horses did not march in rows or ranks like Greek or Roman soldiers they swarmed down into their enemies on their swift horses almost as quickly as if they were flying and here we see some pictures of these Saracens, these Mohammedans When one examines the locusts of Arabia, he will soon see that they literally look like little horses. In fact, the Bedouins describe them as soldiers' horses. The old Italians called them cavaletta, which means little horses. The locust is used in scripture to denote swarming numbers, and this was a neat symbol of the amazing numbers of the Arabs as they swarmed out of the desert in conquest. The prophet said, make thyself many as locusts. Nahum chapter 3 verse 5 They came as the grasshoppers of locusts for multitude Judges chapter 6 verse 5 The Arab tribes issuing from Arabia with their great speed far ranging and irresistible progress were fittingly symbolized by the swarms of locusts The Arab warriors are likened to horses prepared for battle This also is a true picture of the type of military force that was used by the Arabs in their method of attack Edward Gibbon says this, I shall here observe what I must often repeat, that the charge of the Arabs was not like that of the Greeks and Romans. The effort of a firm and compact infantry, their military force was chiefly formed of cavalry and archers. Breastplate, the warriors wore iron breastplates. Swarm, the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses rushing to battle. This correctly describes a locust invasion. When locusts swarm out into the countryside, their sound is similar to that of chariots charging to battle. This aptly describes an Arab army of cavalry rushing into battle for which they were so famous and by which such great terror 